For most of us, robots have been the ultimate stuff of sci-fi fantasy, a compelling, fantastical, futuristic dream. Or maybe they're the stuff of nightmares. It kind of depends on how you look at it. But for one company, making robots a reality is the sort of beating microchip heart of their very existence. They are Boston Dynamics. Yes, here is a company making a real song and dance out of pushing the envelope of what robotics can do. And while these lots strutting their stuff in a recent promo film is frankly pretty damn impressive, let's leave them to it and find out why Boston Dynamics could be about to pull off their most impressive moves yet. Well, I think they're, they're, they're definitely the state of the art. I think that their competitors look to them to, to see what direction they're going in and even to the level of uh, students that are interested in, in doing uh, research in robotics, they're usually the motivation. So, who are Boston Dynamics? Well, starting life in 1992, they were originally part of MIT, a kind of kooky collective of enthusiasts led by Mark Rybert, who simply wanted to have fun pushing robotics to the limits. He started with one-legged robots. In our lab, we've been concentrating on active balance. And to do that, initially, we built machines that only had one leg. Their creativity accelerated. And it was this chap, Big Dog, their first free-roaming, four-legged friend that started to capture the public attention. Not quite the stuff of sci-fi future just yet. More two drunk guys carrying a sofa, as one comment on YouTube eloquently put it. But there was method behind the madness, and it was more complicated than you might think. Lots of robotic systems use wheel, wheel platforms, but to move into the areas where people live and in accessible places, legs are necessary to step over obstacles, climb staircases, or to go up and over hills. For a walking robot like a four-legged uh, quadruped, you have to continuously send commands at maybe 400 times a second to continually readjust its balance to overcome small disturbances, pushes or so on, any contact with the world. Boston, though, have always raced off, reimagined and redesigned at a great pace. From the clunky, noisy, but, you know, still pretty scary LS3 here, creeping through a hedge, to its successor, the Wildcat, which was kind of the Usain Bolt of the robot world. What's extraordinary is the software inside. It's constantly calculating weight distribution and keeping it balanced. When these robots tread onto a rough terrain, they don't have brains telling them to step carefully. They have an array of sensors constantly scanning around them, telling their software how to adapt. But it isn't as spontaneous as you think. Far from it. If uh, one of the actions was to do a forward roll with the, the, the humanoid, uh, Atlas, um, that would have been uh, designed in advance, uh, iterated upon in simulation, um, there would have been consideration on how much forces, so the elbows and the shoulders would have taken, that would have gone into the hardware design, and then on the algorithm design they would have, would have stabilised this action, so in, in a physics simulator um, that it would be reliable enough that, that when you move to the robot that there would be a good probability of success. So there's an interaction between um, all of these components uh, on, a, on a repeated cycle. Planning and programming what you see in a video like this can take months, not minutes. Just by looking at those robots, you can already see just how rapid Boston's advances have been. Which does mean there is finally a possibility that robots are about to take over the world. But I don't mean that in a kind of violent, apocalyptic way. Just more in the way that we integrate them into our everyday lives. The question has always been, sure, these robots are hilarious to look at, but how will we actually use them? Will all homes have a spot here to load the dishwasher or awkwardly bring you a can of drink? Oh, maybe not. Or has the rise of the robots kind of slipped up? Don't worry, by the way, those banana skins are there just to prove he's clever enough to get back up. Boston Dynamics was bought by Google several years ago, and that was an acquisition that many thought would steer it more towards the mass market. Google's heart and soul is, of course, in hugely successful products that can sell and make money. 
but Boston just weren't that sort of company. They were playing the long game. It is quite a challenge to convince industrial companies um, to use an expensive piece of kit that's walking around to do inspection or to have value. But I think they're taking a long bet to that um, this will open up new markets um, and that really the first, no pun intended, steps towards robots in our homes really comes through having these robots doing things in industrial environments. Perhaps unsurprisingly, four years after Google snapped them up, they sold them on again. So rather than invading our houses, Boston made big strides in the worlds of commerce and medicine, with their robots being used in warehouses and construction sites, treading into areas that are too dangerous for us. And of course, this year, they've even started being engaged to remotely treat COVID patients. In a post-pandemic world, the robot has once again become hot property. Right now, it feels like Boston Dynamics have kind of hit that robotic sweet spot, just as we've all become more accepting of them helping us through these rather testing times. They've decided to unleash the dog, quite literally. Finally, they've made one of their robots commercially available. Spot can be yours for a cool $75,000. That obviously means not many of us will be getting one. But Maurice and his team at Oxford University did manage to get one and bring it over to the UK. And they've discovered that this spot in a box is far more than just a very expensive gadget. We're involved in projects that are using the robot to explore an underground facility. Maybe we're given no information and you'd like to have a 3D understanding or maybe, for example, to locate or identify uh, victims in, 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 a, in a disaster circumstance. So that's one application. Another application that, that is probably the primary use case is in industrial inspections. So working with partners around the UK to, uh, to see whether this platform could be used for routine inspection, where current inspection on maybe a remote facility such as an offshore platform or in a, in a nuclear facility requires putting a person into harm's way. Here we could take a person out of harm's way and have that person oversee the robot from outside of a complex facility. And so, to that dynamic dilemma. Now, if you read the comments under any Boston Dynamics video online, I guarantee you that 50% will say, hey, this is cool. And the other half will say, this is literally the moment when the plot of the Terminator becomes true. Boston's videos of robots being teased and kicked were mocked in a parody viral hit where the robots fought back. Robots fill us with intrigue, but also trepidation because we've all seen too many sci-fi films. So when we see spot robots being used by authorities for social distancing in Singapore, or being deployed for the first time by state police in Massachusetts, well, as you can imagine, civil liberty groups have some concerns. Boston themselves have reiterated their stance that none of their creations will be weaponized. But when you start to sell more, will you really be able to keep track? What we do know is that Boston Dynamics are more than just the novelty acrobats of the robot world. They are leading the way. But behind the somersaults and synchronicity, there's still a very long journey ahead to get anywhere close to the kind of things we see in the movies. <laughs>